Hello everybody, it's Brian for GadgetUnit.com and today I just wanted to give you guys a quick tour of my MacBook Air. So if you aren't aware, I've had this computer since about late August of this year. I got it to replace my iPad 2 and I've been loving it ever since. So in terms of specs, this is the base 13 inch 2012 MacBook Air. So it has a 1.8 gigahertz Intel Core i5-3427U. So it's a dual core processor that's multi-threaded, so it's four threads max. In terms of the OS, it's currently running Mac OS 10.8.2, but I also have Windows 8 Professional 64-bit with Media Center Edition because you can't forget about Windows Media Center. In terms of RAM, I have just four gigabytes. I didn't know if I should have gotten eight. The store didn't have eight at the time and I didn't really want to wait for them to configure one for me. So I stuck with four and I've been happy with it ever since. I haven't run into any low memory issues or anything like that. For storage, it just has a 128 gig SSD. I did have a 240 gig SSD in here from OWC, but that actually died a couple of weeks ago. So I went back to the original SSD and that was actually the second OWC review unit that I had. And the first one was dead on arrival. So that really tells you about the reliability of OWC's drive. So I'm gonna be making a dedicated video to talk to you guys about that. Lastly, in terms of graphics, it has an integrated Intel HD Graphics 4000 GPU with 512 megabytes of dedicated video memory. Here's my desktop. It's very clean and simple. I have a nice looking wallpaper, a nice sunset going on on some farm of some sort. I don't have my i or I don't have my desktop filled with icons and folders and things that don't need to be there. Here's my dock. It's very simple and clean as well. I went from the stock sort of 3D design to a 2D design like this and I like it a lot. It, it's a bit small, but when I'm running full screen applications, I want to be able to have as much room given to the application as possible. Yeah, you could hide the dock so that when you bring your mouse down all the way to the bottom, it would sort of lift up, but I don't really like having to wait, so that's why I made it this small, the dock that is. In terms of applications, here are all of the apps that I have in my applications folder. I manually organized all of this, so it took a while, but here's Launchpad, and this is where I mainly launch most of my applications. So the first folder is the Utilities folder, which is basically applications utilities so everything in here is in here the stock folder is filled with stock Apple applications now I actually manually removed a lot of the stock apps that I didn't use so for example chess is gone um, there were some various utilities like graphing the graphing utility a color picker app and little applications like those I manually removed so that is what the stock folder consists of if we go to the in dock folder, this has the same set of icons that I have in my dock. Now ScreenFlow isn't in here because that's just that just happens to be an open application that I don't usually have in my dock. And in the auto folder, these are applications that automatically load when you log in. So those include uh, Dropbox, Log Me In, iClean Memory, as well as iSnap. So that's what that folder is for. And everything else that you see here are all of the other applications that I currently have installed. So I have Photoshop CS5, Air Server, so that I can do AirPlay mirroring from my iDevice, Audacity for recording voiceovers, Clean My Mac for cleaning up applications and cache files and whatnot, Discade 6, which allows me to connect directly to my iDevice and transfer files to and from it, File FileZilla for FTP access, Google Chrome, which I use for practically nothing because I primarily use Safari as my web browser in Mac OS X. If I'm on the Windows side of things, of course, I will use Chrome. I have Handbrake for doing video conversions, Microsoft Excel, PowerPoint, and Word for my school stuff, Minecraft, which I can't really play anymore because the account that I've been using, the person decided to change their password. So if any of you guys have a Minecraft account that you wouldn't mind letting me use just to mess around with every so often, then go ahead and let me know. I also have Parallels Desktop 8 for running Windows inside of Mac OS X so that I don't have to wait a long time to reboot my machine. Because if you all know, if you do have Windows installed via Boot Camp, there's a, about a 15 to 20 second delay after the boot screen goes up and when you boot it through a virtual machine, that doesn't, it just doesn't happen. I have ScreenFlow for recording videos like these where I record my Mac OS X desktop. I also have TeamViewer, which I use for helping other people with their computer issues that they might have. I have the Unarchiver. This is mainly used for unzipping or unrarring 
files that have multiple zip or RAR files. I also have Theme Park, which I use to open up various iTunes image resources. So for example, if I go over to, oops, if I go over to iTunes.app, show package contents, go to resources, sort it by file type. If we go find the resources folder or file. So for example, we have these for device images and device icons. You could actually use this, this program, Theme Park, to go ahead and open these files up and view the images that you have inside of them. So these are basically just the images that make iTunes work, as you can see here. Now sometimes, very rarely though, Apple actually includes device images for unreleased devices inside of these folders for upcoming iPods or iPhones and things like that. So sometimes they stick early images of devices in here and I just go ahead and look at them. Because as you can see, here's an iPad mini and here's a blue latest gen iPod touch. So it's kind of interesting to mess with every so often. Typically when a new version of iTunes comes out, there wasn't really anything interesting in iTunes 11. So next up we have uTorrent, which is the preferred torrent client. It's easy to use and it's very lightweight. We also have VLC for playing back practically any type of audio or video file that you could think of. And lastly, I have a WinClone Pro, which I use for backing up my Windows partition. Let me go to my in-doc folder to show you some things about that. So I have notes. So once my semester starts up again on Monday the 14th, I think that's the day. Or is it the 15th? I have no idea. Okay, it's the 14th. What I do is I open up notes, I double click on a note in the list, and that will pop out that note. So I can just leave it there on my desktop and I can edit it whenever I like. Whenever I make a change to it, it's automatically synced to my iPhone. So that's what I use for syncing things that I have to do for my classes, like assignments, due dates, things like that. Tweetbot is the Twitter client that I use. Now I will say that this is the cracked version, 1.0.1. There's just no way I will ever pay 20 bucks for a Twitter client. I don't care what the situation is with the amount of users the client can use Macs or anything like that. I, I don't care. The application does not need to be $20, especially when you're considering that it's practically the same thing as the iPad version, which is two or three bucks. So why should this cost 10 times more? It just doesn't make any sense. Next up, we have Skype, which I, I haven't used Skype for an audio call in a very long time, so it's mainly used for instant messaging. Steam, I typically leave open on my desktop, which is in the other room, 24-7 practically, so I don't really open it on my MacBook very often, so I probably could get rid of it from my dock. Next up is Messages, which I use for iMessage. Next we have Mail, which is my default mail client. I have about five or six email addresses that I manage on a daily basis, but hopefully once I get rid of the tech era and MBA users, that will go ahead and go down a bit. Next up is Safari, which is, again, my preferred web browser. And lastly, we have iTunes, which is my preferred audio player. In the auto folder, I have Dropbox, which is good for syncing files across multiple computers instantly. Oops. We also have iClean Memory, so I don't really use this too much because Mac OS X is already pretty good at managing memory. But sometimes if I'm low on memory, I'll go ahead and go to the menu bar option here and go to optimize memory and that will go ahead and go through all the open processes and get rid of anything that doesn't really need to be open. Next is iSnap and if you've used Windows anytime soon or over the past ever since Vista came out there's a feature called AeroSnap where you could drag a window to the top of the screen to maximize it to the right side to make it fill the right half of the screen or to the left to make it fill the left half of the screen and that's what iSnap brings you. I think it was free when I picked it up. I have no idea how much it is now. I found it in the Mac App Store. And it also supports keyboard uh, shortcuts, as you can see here. Very easy to use, and I like it a lot. And lastly, we have Log Me In, which is what I use for remotely connecting to my Mac computer to go ahead and control it. I also have Log Me In installed onto my other computers as well. It's just really convenient to use sometimes. And I believe that's it. I think this video went on, okay, about 10 minutes. That's actually much longer than I wanted this to, but 
that is it with this video. If you have any comments, questions, or feedback about this or anything else, or if you have anything that you would like me to show you in a different video, then go ahead and let me know. But that is it with this video. So thanks a lot for watching, and I'll talk to you all very soon.